In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to find the magnitude and direction of a 3D vector. To be successful here, this is what you'll need. If the vector, let's say v is equal to v1, v2, and v3, in other words, those are the coordinates of that vector, or its components in x, y, z, its magnitude or length is usually denoted by the symbol v with these double absolutes, and it's computed using the following formula, where we take each of those components, we square them, add them, then square root. It's a variant of the Pythagorean theorem. In addition, to find the direction angles in three space, whose initial position is at the origin, we use the following three formulas. Notice that we also need the magnitude for these formulas. Let's begin by finding the magnitude of our vector, the square root of two, five, and negative seven. So I'll substitute these values into this formula, where I have the square root of two raised to the power of two is two, five raised to the power of two is 25, and negative seven raised to the power of two is positive 49. We'll take the square root. Two plus 25 is 27, plus 49 is 76. So we have the square root of 76 represents the magnitude of our vector. At this point, we can use these formulas to find the direction. So we already found the magnitude. Let's start by finding the angle relative to the x component. We'll write down cosine alpha is equal to the square root of 2 over the square root of 76 using our calculator and notice that our calculations in degrees the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 76 and if we take cosine inverse of this we end up with 80.6 degrees 80.6 degrees let's do the same thing but for cosine beta 5 over the square root of 76. 5 divided by the square root of 76 is equal to that. And now we take cosine inverse of that number, 55 degrees. And finally, cosine gamma is equal to negative 7 over the square root of 76. Negative 7 divided by the square root of 76 gives us, and taking the cosine inverse of that, is equal to 143 degrees. That being said, these represent the directions relative to the x, y, and z component. And what's interesting about these calculations here specifically is that by finding the answers to these, you can actually write down the unit vector for this vector, which we can represent as u hat. And the answers to each of these would be represented here, here, and here in case you're asked to find the unit vector of a vector that's in 3D. There you have it. That is how to find the magnitude and direction of a 3D vector.